Hey guys, Reed Havens with Havens Consulting here. Today we're going to talk about the types of interactions that visuals and other objects on the report page in Power BI can have between each other and the ways that they can cross filter each other and some use cases on why you might want to apply one type versus another or even disable it entirely. But let's go ahead, hop into the Power BI desktop and get started. So by default, the types of interactions that most visuals have is something like this. If you were to select computer, there we are. Notice how you actually get a cross filter and a highlight over top of this. So you have the original data and then you have a highlighted amount that is showing here as well. So you can see kind of both parts and a grand total in that case. And sometimes you might not want this and depending on how the data looks, in this case, the data is kind of scattered around since you have something on the legend. But let's actually come up to the format ribbon up here, go over to edit interactions and now look at the symbols that are appearing above any of these. Now, you first need to start by selecting the visual itself that is filtering the other visuals. So in this case, the visual that is filtering the other visuals is my waterfall chart. And currently what we have selected here is the highlight option. I can also choose to change this to filter. So now instead of showing both the grand total and the subtotals from that filter, it's just showing the lower subtotal section. And I actually think this is a cleaner look. So I'm actually gonna change the setting between these two visuals to this one. Now, some visuals have the highlight option, others do not, like the chord visual, which is a custom visual. It does not have a highlight option. They're easy either filtering or another option is to disable that entirely. If I turn that off, this visual, as I click around, will not filter it at all. So there might be some times where you have a grand total card or something else where you do want to ignore it, but just be careful of turning that on or off unless you absolutely want to make sure and it is very clear and indicated to the users that this needs to be disabled. So I'll keep that back on for now. But again, every visual that you select you can choose the type of interaction that this visual does to others. Again, the table can have an option to do a cross filter as an example right here. So that highlight, if I was to select Contoso as a filter range, or maybe actually let's go ahead and select a regular. There we go. So Contoso regular, we can see that it is highlighting for Contoso and regular here. And we can also again observe what happens if we actually just change it to a filter. That's not telling me nearly as much. So I actually do like the highlight option here because that means is as I click through these, it can highlight just the Contosa bar, just the regular, or if I get even further down into a color, it shows me a portion right here of that Contoso value as well for that subsection of the regular class for the specific brand of Contoso. And last but not least, I wanna mention that this is a toggle that is enabled. So you wanna make sure you don't accidentally click any of these as you're developing. So when you're done, make sure to go ahead and click on the ribbon at the top and turn back off the edit interactions options. The last thing that we actually wanna do is come up to file. We're gonna to go to options and settings, open up the options menu, and then come on over here, coming down to report settings under current file. And if you notice right here, there's an option to change the default visual interaction from cross highlighting, to cross filtering. So for any new visual, you can choose to change the default action from cross highlighting to cross filtering if desired for that report. And now we've managed to explore all the options for how to change interactions. We've seen the default for cross highlighting. We've also seen cross filtering as well. And then last but not least, we've seen how to disable it and then also to change the default behavior for the entire report. So hopefully you found this useful and this has helped you to find more of the art of possible of what you can do in a Power BI report. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.